Hey everyone, this is Fidel Hacker AJ Raven. I'm here with my recap and review of Bruto anime episode number 184, which is titled Puppets. And I enjoyed this episode. I also enjoyed the changes that the anime studio made to certain manga panels. And of course, adding more Kara scenes so that we get to know more about Delta and Code. So the episode opens with Kwaki. He's just standing alone on top of a cliff and he's looking, I think he's looking at the crash site. I'm not really sure, but yeah, Kwaki, Kwaki is coming, you all. I'm kind of excited, but also not because I'm excited that Kwaki is going to be involved and then we'll get more adaptations of the manga panels. But then again, I'm also a bit, a bit conflicted because as soon as Kwaki enters the main narrative, Mitsuki and Salad get benched. So I really don't want the anime to bench Mitsuki and Salad, but let's see what happens. Then we cut to the research lab and it's time for Baruto, Mitsuki, Salad and Katasuke to leave the research lab in order to fi find out what's happened to Kohanamaru and Majino. And of course, Akita is giving them tools. She's giving them a few scientific ninja tools. She's giving them manuals for the scientific ninja tools. She's also giving them a list of contacts in case they need any any help. And Baruto is like, you know what, Akita Sensei, I I appreciate what you're doing, but we can't carry a whole lot because it will only weigh us down. And Akita is like, yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's just a scientist in me. I'm just being worried about all of you. And then uh, Baruto is like. Uh, by the way, where's Katasuke? And also Chamaru is going with them, so that's good as well. And yeah, as far as Katasuke is uh, concerned, he comes out wearing this uh, mecha type suit. And apparently it was created to give uh, to give some sort of care to people in need. But then Katasuke ended up uh, changing a few things to make it more offensive, as well as defensive to be used during battle. It's still a prototype. So there's still a lot that they need to fix. And Katasuke is like, why not just test it out in the field? And I really like Sumeru's expressions and expression in the background. And talking about Sumeru's expression, uh, if you guys remember, this was a scene in the manga where Sumeru is like, hmm, what about you, Sar uh, Sarada? Do you like him? Bruto, that is, as if. And uh, Sumeru is like, yeah, I like him. It was basically a scene where uh, Sumeru was like, uh, she was looking at Bruto interacting with Akita and she was like, oh, it, uh, it looks like uh, Bruto, Bruto's very, uh, Bruto, it's, it's easy for Bruto to connect with other people. Other people seem to like him. And Salad is like, yeah, ju that's just ha how Bruto is. And in the manga, Sumeru is like, uh, Salad, do you like Bruto? And Salad is like, as as if I don't like him. And so Mere, actually, she re, she basically uh, confesses her feelings for Baruto. She is like, well, uh, well, Salad, I like Baruto. <laughs> So it was a moment that I understand that certain Bruto and Sumire shippers were looking forward to, but the anime decided not to add it and they ended up changing the entire scene. It was basically Sumire. She notices uh, Bruto's interaction with Akita and, and, and she is like, oh, so it, turned, it looks like Akita likes Bruto. And then Salad in the anime is like, yeah, that's just how Bruto is. Everyone likes him. And then she waves goodbye and they all leave. Uh, yeah, the entire scene was cut out of the, uh, from, the, uh, from the anime. And you know what? I understand it. I, I think that it makes sense considering how shy of a character Sumire is. I don't think Sumire would just confess her feelings towards Bruto just like that to Salad. And personally, I like what the anime is doing with uh, Sumire because they are giving her her own motivations and her own goals of supporting the village in her own way instead of just having her be the possible love interest for the main protagonist. So kudos to the anime team for that. However, I can also understand where the Bruto and Sumire shippers are coming from because they were, I guess they waited like two years for the scene to be finally animated and then the entire scene was cut. Yeah, it is, it is what it is. But you know what? I think the anime writers they are get they they still they are get, they were probably getting flashbacks to the uh, way back when there was this entire Naru, uh, Naruto Hinata Naruto Sakura Naruto Sasuke ship wars going on. As far as my opinion goes, you know what? I'm here for the anime writers keeping the ship uh, the shipping wars away from the main narrative of the anime. So they wave goodbye and they go on on their way. They reach the crash, crash site and they see these puppets on the ground and Bruto is like, wait, so these these are like what? Puppets? So maybe, uh, so, and they probably attacked Konamaru and Majino Sensei and then Team 7 is like, wait, if these are puppets, then the puppet user might be near as well. 
While that's happening, Katasuke is uh, searching inside the blimp or the aircraft and he notices, uh, of course, he's very impressed uh, with, with all of the technology in there. And he notices uh, the compartment for the vessel and, he's, and, he, and he also understands that, yep, something was probably inside it and now it's run away. And the puppets come to life and Team 7 have to figure out a way to beat them. Ruto uses his lightning arrow, Salad uses her fire jutsu, and Mitsuki uses his wind jutsu. They are able to push the puppets to the ground and they fall, but, but yeah, these puppets are durable. They get back up and they start using uh, fireball jutsus and Team 7 has to run away. And they go to Katasuke, who's already in a safe place, and he's like, we can, we can, hold, uh, we can hold our line here for a bit. And, and Salad notices that the puppets weren't using... Uh, they weren't weaving hand signs to use the fireball jutsu. And she's like, yep, these are science scientific ninja tools, right? And Katasuke is like, yeah, so may, uh, yeah, Salad, you're, you're right. These are scientific ninja tools and we have to be very careful when fighting scientific ninja tools. And this is where Katasuke steps up to the plate. He's like, you know what? When it, uh, when it comes to scenarios like this, we need to fight uh, scientific ninja tools with scientific ninja tools. And it turns out that the suit that he's wearing, he's, he is able to use that suit to absorb uh, jutsus. And he ends up uh, absorbing all of the fireball jutsus being aimed at them. And that, and that ends up uh, overheating the puppets because they continuously were using fireball, uh, fireball jutsus. And the puppets overheat and they fall to the ground. And I actually liked the entire this entire scene because it it, go, it went to show that even though scientific ninja tools are powerful, they are, because it's technology. Technology always has a drawback. You just have to find it. Team Seven ends up breaking the puppets, and Katasuke is like, "Yeah, we need to break their. We need to break them, and they also have a chakra energy source. We, source. We need to destroy that as well." And then Katasuke ends up taking out a piece of equipment from one of the puppets, and he's like, "You know what? I need to use. I I need to keep this because I'll use this to research and learn more about these puppets." And Salad is like, "Wait, I I thought that scientific ninja technology, the data surrounding all of it, was secret, and it was only confined to." the leaf village and then we get a flashback to when katasuke was uh, in genjutsu and the genjutsu was released so yeah during during that tenure when he was under genjutsu he ended up leaking information and katasuke of course he blames this entire attack on himself and he's like yeah it was because of me that data about uh, scientific ninja tools fell into the wrong hands and then Chamaru comes in and Chamaru has konamaru's kunai and he ends up leading team seven to where Konamaru and the rest are, uh, Konamaru and Majino are in the cave, but before that happens, we cut to Code. He goes in and he attacks uh, Jigen for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Jigen is able to easily defend himself against Code, and Code basically wants Jigen to allow him to handle the traitor situation. And Jigen is like, No, I have already given you a task, and it's an important task, uh, and I need you to focus on that. And Code isn't happy about it, and he's leaving uh, Jigen's room. He meets up with Delta, and Delta is like, So, you were talking to Jigen about the traitor thing, right? And uh, Code doesn't really answer. And Delta, and Delta is like, well, it's not my fault that Jigen likes the other one uh, instead of you. And I guess as far as my opinion goes, I think that Delta is talking about Kash and Goji. Because, of course, Jigen sent Kash and Goji to figure out the traitor thing, uh, the traitor thing and, uh, and the crashed aircraft. And Code has been, uh, has been an, given another task that I don't want to spoil for anime onlys. And again, I'm liking how the anime writers are giving us more scenes focusing on the Kara members so that we get to know more about the personalities. So Team 7 is in the cave. Mujino is... Mujino can he can, will be okay because apparently according to Kohanamaru, he didn't suffer any internal injuries, so he'll be okay. And it's very weird that uh, Kohanamaru, Baruto, Salad, and Mitsuki, none of them know medical jutsu. I, I thought that uh, having at least one member in a team know about the basics of medical jutsu was... Uh, it was mandatory for three for three for a three person cell or a three person team, but yeah, it is what it is.
Amaru ends up giving the scroll to Kotosuke and he's like, there's a whole lot of important data in there. I need you to analyze it. But before they can do anything, Ao comes in and Ao is like, yeah, I, I'm going to kill you all. And of course, Mujino and Konamaru are confused. Baruto is confused too because Ao was a shinobi who fought on the good side during the fourth, fourth Great Ninja War. And again, I really hope that the anime gives us an explanation about Ao's decision because right now, Ao being used by the Kara organization makes no sense. So he ends up uh, loading his, I think that's a Gatling gun, and he starts firing and uh, there's a continuous barrage of fireball jutsus and everyone dodges and I really liked how Salad picked up Chahamaru and uh, took him to safety. So Katsuke is like, yep, leave this to me. It's a scientific ninja tool again. So he uses his suit to start absorbing Ao's uh, fireball jutsus from his weapon. This allows uh, Konamaru to come in with a Rasengan and he uses the Rasengan to break the Gatling gun. And Ao is actually impressed by Konamaru because he remembers that jutsu because of course he knows that Naruto knows how to use it. Again, Konamaru is like, Ao, if you're doing something here, I need you to I need you to come clean with me. I need you to tell me what you're doing. I need you to tell me about the Kara organization. And Ao is actually surprised that Konamaru knows about the Kara organization. And before Konamaru can say anything, Ao ends up attacking Konamaru. Because of course, if you remember, Ao's entire body has scientific ninja tools. And he and I think he uses these small chakra bombs to hit Konamaru in the face. And Konamaru is down. Katasuke, of course, Katasuke is isn't happy about it and then Ao because he's a shinobi and he he yeah he can be very fast he ends up uh, taking one of the gloves of the suit that Katasuke is wearing because Ao is very impressed about with how this suit can absorb jutsu and then uh, he wears it and Bruto comes in with a Rasengan and of course Ao uses the suit to absorb uh, Bruto's uh, jutsu and kick Bruto away and then uh, only Mitsuki and Salad are standing and Salad is like, you know what, I can use the flash bomb that Miss Akita gave me. But yeah, Konamaru and Majino don't know the signal. So even though Bruto, Bruto, Mitsuki and Katasuke will be okay, the flash bomb might end up uh, hurting uh, or of course it will disorient Konamaru and Majino. And she's still trying to process what to do. She needs as Ao is making his way into the cave, Mujino stands up and he ends up uh, grabbing Ao and he's like, Ao, you need to stop. You're a, we met during uh, the funeral. Remember, uh, uh, like two or three episodes ago, uh, the Leaf Village had this entire funeral ceremony where they remembered all of the all of the people they lost during the war, and that's uh, that's the episode where Magino ended up meeting Ao. And Magino was impressed by how Ao was living his life. He survived the Great Ninja War. He ended up getting these uh, scientific ninja tools. He as a bot as body parts. He ended up becoming a cyborg basically and he and Ao's main goal as far as Magino was concerned Ao told Magino that he wanted to help other people and he will continue to do so even though he can't be a ninja anymore and uh, and Magino was very impressed by it and Magino is like you need to remember that time you need to remember that conversation you're a ninja and Ao is like yeah you don't understand I'm not a ninja anymore I'm a tool and he ends up using this chakra blade to pierce uh, Magino and Magino is injured again and uh, yeah I still I really hope that we get a, we get a better explanation about why Ao is doing all of this and uh, Magino Magino is like you know what I, I have no choice so Magino ends up using a jutsu and he ends up uh, making the cave fall on top of Ao, Ao and himself and he's going to sacrifice himself to save his friends and Magino is like the rest of you need to run and he also tells Buruto to remember what he's told him and I think it's about uh, Magino asking Buruto to take care of his little turtle who and also the little life lesson that Magino gave Buruto during that uh, episode. So the cave, uh, yeah, the, every, the entire environment caves in and uh, Magino's dead. Magino is dead. In the, in the manga, his death wasn't really emotional because we didn't know anything about Magino. But due to the manga, uh, due to the anime writers taking time to flesh out his character, his death makes more sense. It's, it's more emotional for Konamaru and Team 7. And I think that Buruto and his friends needed to experience the death of a loved one so that they understood how deadly the... the uh, the world of ninja can be, especially when they're fighting someone that uh, someone like the Kara organization. 
they notice that Ao is still alive, so Bruto goes in to, her, uh, to fight uh, Ao, but uh, Konamaru is like, no, Bruto, we need to retreat, we can't let uh, Mujino's sacrifice be in vain, so they all run away, and Ao, com Ao comes out, and he's like, yep, you can run, you can try to hide, but I'm going to kill every single one of you, and this is where the episode ends. I will be doing a written review of this for the Geek Theory. The link to the review will be down in the comment section below. I enjoyed this episode. I think it uh, it fleshed out certain scenes more, which I appreciated. And I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next. Let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comment section below. Until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later.